Hi and welcome back to Crown Box Flying Adventures for 2021. We'll be looking at my ability to land STOL in a microlight. Short takeoff and landings, so also of course not just landings, takeoffs as well. How short can I land and how much runway do I really need to take off? So keep watching for that, but before you do, maybe you want to go and look at the link above now and uh, check out the best most viewed videos, the top 10 for 2020, as seen by the viewers of the channel. And then you can come back and watch this one. Clap up. This morning we're going to practice short field landings. Uh, I'm going to try and get it as short as I can. But before we do that, I've had a few uh, comments about this uh, turn back, impossible turn, 180 degree turn uh, video that we're going to be putting out there soon. Um, maybe they'll come out in the other order. I think they probably will actually. But the thing is, the safest way to practice this is go up to like two and a half thousand. Go up to two and a half or three thousand or some height you feel comfortable with and try turning up there. Find something on the ground in a safe area and um, use that as a reference line and then try power off and do a 180 degree turn and see if you can line up on the other side and see how much altitude you actually lose on the turn, the 180, and then you'll get an idea of how your aircraft is performing during that manoeuvre. Anyway, we're going to get on with it, so uh, let's do that. We're just warming up now. We're going to go and do some uh, short takeoff and landing, uh, short field operations if you like. Um, see how short I can uh, land. Uh, do some practice with that. We've just been flying, so everything's warmed up, ready to go. In this stall or short takeoff and landings video, I will try landing and taking off three times to get an average distance of my techniques. Mirabara traffic, microlight 6340 enters backtracks 17, Mirabara. The goal is to land as short as possible with a controlled, precise approach and careful monitoring of the airspeed, all very important. Runway conditions play a huge factor in roll distance, as does aircraft weight, ground speed, wind strength and direction. Mirror traffic, microlight 6340 lines up rolls, uh, 1 2 for uh, circuits, runway 1 2 3 0, Mirror. Today the runway is short slightly damp grass and a firm surface. The wind is light and quartering from the right. Possibly the worst situation for ground roll. Conversely, the runway conditions favour the takeoff, but more headwind would help that though too.
Perfect. Mark line 6340 is downwind runway 12 for a uh, stop and go Mirabar. What we want to do is check landing site or the five S's seen listed in the description. Factor in altitude or density altitude. Check wind direction and use it to our advantage. Plan the approach before final. Land as close to the threshold as we can. Approach at the slowest safe airspeed to minimize ground roll. Modify our airspeed for wind gusts and gradients. Ensure obstacles are not too high for approach and departures. Mirabar traffic. Michael 6340 turns base 1 2 stop and go Mirabar. Traffic, Mark Light 6340 is airborne uh, 1-2, uh, turn across winds for a stop and go, 1-2, mirror. What we don't want to do is land too short of the threshold, land too long, or we will run out of rollout room, avoid stall and wind shear, have enough airspeed, land where we cannot take off again, land on a site that is too short, for landing and takeoff. Mirabar traffic, Micro 6340 turns the base 1 2, stop and go, Mirabar. Traffic, 
In this attempt, I came in too fast and tried landing quickly to use the brakes. Not the best solution. I typically approach with a 50% above stall, this is 36 knots plus 18 equals 52 knots. Turns out to be the manufacturer's recommended minimum approach speed actually. I know I could approach slower when I need to, more practice with that later. I just don't want to bin the aircraft unnecessarily. turns base. One, two, full stop, Maribor. On approach, constantly monitor your airspeed. For best low speed performance techniques, refer to the aircraft manufacturer's manual um, before flying. You can also try flying slow at a safe above ground elevation to see how the aircraft feels and responds. With the low crosswind conditions I had, I think the results were quite good. My average landing roll was 125 metres and take off about 70 metres. I reckon I can shorten the landing roll with some more practice. I need to come in slower. Well, we'll save that for another video. Check out the 5S's in the description. Very good to consider for all landings. Six three four zero enters back tracks uh, three five Mara and one seven. All right, so that's stole landings and takeoffs and everything like that. Uh, can probably improve on it, but like I've been doing, everything I do and everything we do as pilots can be improved upon. Um, we're now going to do a couple of other things while we're here filming. Um, I've got someone with a camera, tripod and everything filming what I'm doing from the ground. So it uh, makes for a more interesting video. You've probably already seen some of those shots in this video. Mirror traffic, microlight 6340 is clear of all runways, Mirror. So um, he's doing all the walking and the lugging of the camera gear this morning. We're just going to pull up over here. And we'll continue filming a couple of other things and we're all done for the day. More videos like this, day trip style videos coming soon. It's been really good having you along this morning. Um, I hope you're enjoying these videos and if there's anything else you want to see let me know. I think training is very important with these types of things. If you're enjoying the videos, please give me a like on this one and any future ones that you enjoy. It really helps the channel grow and uh, bring me more, uh, bring me, bring you more content, something like this. And whatever you ask, we'll have a look at and give it a go. Um, and subscribe if you want to see some of those more videos and ring the bell so you get notifications in the future, should there be any. And I should have put my visor up, but there you go. So um, until the next video, 
have a safe time and I'll keep pouring these videos out as often as I can. Coming up next on Cranbox Flying Adventures, my wife and I will fly to Fraser Island and check out the burnt vegetation. But before we did that, I received a mandatory service bulletin from Rotax to do some repairs to my engine. So those were carried out and you'll be able to see what I had to do and how the aircraft performed after it. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you again soon.